clearly saw Mark Andrews took the law into his own hands a little bit there and uh, was asking for protection from the line judge it's taken now by Andre Fenter who turned 27 yesterday Fenter driving hard Fender Verstaisen Erasmus the dummy was too horse to run Fender Verstaisen Honeyball Sneijman uh, South Africans dropping the ball in vital situations as Benazi gets it away to St. Andre Saduni Van der Westhuizen's covered well see how quickly the blue jerseys wrap around him now somebody will have to take up the fly half a scrum half position penalty to South Africa off the feet is uh, again the cry Fabian Pelous is the man So it's Percy Montgomery who will go for the touch line. And the touch judge has his flag up. And it's a right on the spot. Brilliant kick by Percy Montgomery. Oh, the touch judge came from a long way back. And you saw Jean-Luc Sardoni say to him, that was touching goal. So South Africa might have got away with something there. Fantastic crowd here today. They, Andy was telling you they're redoing the stand at the one end for the World Cup soccer next year. And so the, it's not at absolute capacity, but in terms of the number of seats available, just about chock-a-block. Vital ball here, probably for Mark Andrews. It goes deep and is badly interfered with. That's almost a penalty try situation. If Mark Andrews had caught that ball, South Africa were in great position to have driven for the try line. Yeah, well, you can see there that uh, the French weren't interested in uh, playing the ball at all. The referee is saying the cavalry charge is illegal. James Dalton will pick up. They'll have to go low. He lets it to, gets it to ground immediately. France have turned it around, have they? No. Well, that's bad refereeing by Derek Bevan, I'm afraid. Those Frenchmen were offside on that, this side. He was in his defence. He was on the other side of the ruck. But the French were definitely offside. But they get the put-in of the scrum. Galtier will feed. The French scrum is pretty solid. Gautier Lacroix has to hack it out and still South Africa attack. Once again, that penalty kick that was taken by Percy Montgomery, one feels that perhaps Gary Teichman should have gone for post, try and level up the scores at three points all. But it is a ploy of Nick Mallet. We saw him do it for Boerland many, many times during the course of last Bankford Curry Cup season. Deep to Teichman, it's too deep. Caban controls Lacroix, La Maison. Galtier, just to move it on the inside there no. to Pelouse. Galtier, Lacroix, the skip pass to Del Masso, now Saint Andre. And it's well tackled by James Small. looked as if it had to have been a forward pass when it reached uh, Philippe Saint-André and then South Africa penalised for a not forward at that stage but I, I rather feel Hugh that, that South Africa are being a bit cavalier with possession the ball is not easily won and when you do win it you want to do something constructive I'm talking about tail ball at the line out there that was a dangerous ploy and I'm sure they should be throwing at the front at the start of this game and securing the drive Problems with uh, Tournier and uh, J and Osturant. <laughs> Gautier. And this is La Maison. Great tackle by Andre Fenter. 
Erasmus comes back and he's quite right in doing that. And now De Rousseau is wrapped up very quickly from ball that they should have secured South Africa. Galtier has knocked it on. And uh, the referee says play on to Benetton. And the referee advised, indicating that there was a first South African knock-on first of all. And there's a South African player down as well. I think it might be Urs van der Vestes. And that's the first time that Dick Muir has failed to stop the man coming through. It might not be the last this afternoon. It was uh, La Maison with that lovely straight run from the lateral run off the back by the scrum half Galtier. And I fancy that we might see a few more move, moves like that. It's Peter Rousseau who was the man who was caught at the bottom of that ruck. Now here's that lateral run, and you see the timing of the pass opens it up, and Dick Muir was caught totally flat-footed there. A great cover tackle by uh, Andre Fenter. Johanna Rasmus did well, and from there, South Africa really should have secured the ball, but they didn't. And now it's a penalty to France. There's still Peter Rousseau receiving attention. You see the ice pack onto his ribs. Right at the start of the game, uh, we have to say that uh, the, the, uh, the men on the bench for South Africa today leave them a little bit exposed at uh, three-quarter because if Rousseau goes off, We've only got the two Free State halfbacks to come on. They're, they've gone for a 4-2 forward split. Rousseau seems to have been mended. We've had 21 minutes in the first half. This is another good kick, a little bit worried. Now it's James Small, who uh, picked up there well by Glass and La Flamand coming across on the right wing. Galtier switched to Benazi. Big man, he's knocked it forward. Beautifully picked up by Johanny Rasmus. Dalton to Van der Vestes, and now Peter Rousseau has a chance to get back behind the fence lines and Peter Rousseau doing so well. You see how he appreciated the laws. James Dalton and one of the French players having a fight. It's Califano. Well, it was a beautiful little kick through by Urs van der Verstes, who got hit very high by Dalmasso, and I think that might be where the trouble started. This is Galtier coming back in uh, nice cover defence. Peter Rousseau did very well there. He waited for him to get up and then played the man. He didn't go off his feet and give away a penalty. Now the, the French threw the ball away, so Derek Bevan gave that penalty. South Africa still looking for the five-pointer. Can they keep it up? They want to keep it uh, lifted. That's a, almost a try. And yes, it is. It's a try for South Africa. And it's Dick Muir who gets his second try in his second test match. And I bet all the Queen's guy will, guys will be out of their seats and going in Ganyama Z. Well, you can see he didn't have the ball, so it could even have been an option as a penalty try. And Dick Muir won't have scored many tries going backwards in his long and distinguished career. He has a look up at the ref. The ref says, yes, that's good. And Dick looks more relieved than anything else. I should think Gary Teichman's pretty relieved as well, Andy, having uh, refused the opportunity of going for post three times now. Well, there was also the uh, matter of the restart kick. Um, James Small hacking ahead from the restart. He had no support, and I was talking about Cavalier uh, giving away a possession, and it very nearly uh, cost them, but they've scored a try from it. Difficult conversion this for Henry Honeyball. It's vital. And it Trainer Otto, the ball eludes him, but doesn't elude Bruze, who drives towards the 22. Galtier, Tourner, the tight head prop once again in the action. Galtier, Lacroix, the dummy, Saint Andre, great tackle there by Rossi Erasmus. That's in the side now. Rossi, Rossi's going to be warned. 
Yeah, that was a bad mistake by Johannes Rasmus. Giving the Le Maison a sitter of a penalty. And Derek Bevan quite right. Yeah, there's Rasi Erasmus taking out Abdul Banazi. That's what the penalty is for. And remember that uh, Rasmus uh, was, was instrumental in stopping the original movement. But uh, then he came in from in front of the rear feet. And this will restore the lead for France. for La Maison restoring the French lead and it all resulted from a bit of confusion South Africa really handled the kickoff very badly yes and the timing of the jump from Crano Otto was not good at all he was in the wrong place and basically the French were allowed to to get away with possession unmolested it was Brusé who picked it up Benazi one of the great French players in this team Gal uh, no, it's picked up by Tournier. Galtier, Lacroix, Percy Montgomery will have a lot of place to move here. He's got time, he's got time and he looks for the opening for James Small, who gets inside and outside and eventually it was taken by La Maison and that was good work that by Percy Montgomery. As Andre Fenta said, he turned 27 yesterday, but back in South Africa, of course, happy birthday to Sid Nomis on the 15th of November. Also, Johan LaRue's birthday today, back home. So, a chance here for James Dalton to find his line out forwards. Hasn't done so for the last two balls, so they'll need to consolidate, as Andy said. Throw it short and make sure of the possession. It's far too deep for Crane Otto as Benazi catches. Galtier, Pelouse. Galtier. Derek Bevan saying that the South Africans had pulled them all down. And uh, Fabian Pelouse is got up from that mall very slowly and it'll be Christophe La Maison to kick for touch well the worst aspect of South Africa's performance against Italy last week and remember that they won by a clear 31 points was their line out work and uh, obviously Nick Mallet will have spent a long time working on it this week but still there are problems and, and I think Hugh it comes back to basics you've, you've got to throw front ball if you're struggling now Del Mazzo will feed the line out They've got uh, Bruze at five, but it goes deep to Benazi, Galtier, Califano, Erasmus going low, Galtier, Lacroix, La Maison, Saint Andre, but Dick Muir covered nicely. This is Honeyball. Honeyball setting up the second phase as South Africa drive it on. This is good by Garvey, and he gets it to Andre Fenta. Now James Dalton drives it on and they venture offside once again and Andre Fent has remained on the ground the other two, the two men at the extreme back, Joe Mazo on the right and Jean-Luc Skrila, the two co Joe Mazo, in fact the manager of the French team well this was the first time that South Africa had produced quick ruck ball in the match and you saw the effect that it had on the French and uh, that's the kind of controlled possession that I'd like to see a little bit more of. Excellent work from Henry Honorable in his own 22, didn't panic, set up the first of those rucks, and then the forwards came in and picked and drove, picked and drove, and were all the way back up to France's 22. And now South Africa using the three-man line-out. This is more effective in making sure of it re retaining the ball. Andrew's very secure but the referee indicating it wasn't in straight. Well, it's gone for not straight. 
and uh, from that angle it's very difficult to see, but you can hear what Derek Bevan is saying. Stay down! Stay down! Stay down! And then a long ball from La Maison to Sadoni, Montgomery, nicely fielded. Now it's Le Flamand, this guy's got plenty of pace, but Montgomery is there, so is uh, Fenter, they should have put him to ground. Caban feeding Galtier Lacroix. And look at the cover from Gary Teichman. This is great stuff. James Small on his outside, and he gets it away. No, misread there, unfortunately. Gary Teichman knows it. He was trying to get it on the outside to Peter Rousseau, but Peter Rousseau was expecting James Small to receive from Teichman. 31 minutes gone. France leading by nine points to seven. Three penalties against it. Goal by South Africa. <laughs> Galtier and Lacroix just did the very nice little dummy as Caban backed up. Referee says play on as South Africa desperate to get it, but the French were off their feet. Crano Otto did some very good work to rescue that ball. It was Johanna Rasmus, I think, who got the initial turnover, and then it was loose, and Otto fell on it and secured it. Honeyball, now that's a long one, is it, Gay? Yeah, that's another terrific kick by Henry Honeyball. So the South African punt team being very good. Instructions from Jean-Luc Skrela. Down onto the guys who are sitting on the bench down on the field. Both Skrela and Joe Mazo toured France with the uh, South Africa with the French team in 1971. Somebody shouted Andre Yona and it is Andre Sena. And now trying to get it back to Van der but that scrappy ball for Joost. Benazi's got him wrapped up, he's lifted off his feet by Califano. Garvey did nicely, honey ball, and then well picked up by Erasmus. This is great, this is brilliant. Red Percy's got his try. Percy gets in, and Nick Mallet is on his feet. Well, that was superb stuff from South Africa. Garvey was the man who set away Henry Honorable and he got through and took out two men. That pass then from Johan Erasmus was the one that created the try and Peter Rousseau had a two-man overlap outside him and it was only really a case of Percy hanging on to the ball. And his try-scoring record is really remarkable at uh, the highest level. Well, it's six in this now, his seventh test. Masso, who's been lectured. Well, he's a fiery character. I first saw him when he played for the French Barbarians against South Africa, and he really was a fiery character then. In fact, played himself virtually into the test team in that game. Henry Honeyball has hooked that one away. It's quite amazing that quite often from that position, now this was tremendous work by Honeyball and Erasmus and Rousseau to get Montgomery away. And if we go back a little further, it came from good line-out ball, and uh, that's how important winning your set pieces well is, even though they didn't deliver good ball to Urs van der Westhuizen. Kick-off by La Maison, Andrews is under it this time. 
and uh, he's done well to bring it back on the South African side. Van der Verstezen hoists it high enough for James Small to be there. Caban is also there. James knocked it out of their hands, and the referee picked it up. James Small slapping that ball forward, but Derek Bevan knew about it. Derek Bevan saying to Mark Andrews, it was good. Benazi trying to pick it up, but now it's picked up by Andre Fenter. Galtier makes the tackle. Andrews will want to lay this one back to Van der Verstazen. Honey ball. The skip to Andre Sneijman, who finds a little bit of space and manages to crawl forward. Van der Verstazen. Durant, who's going to tackle him? It's Benetton who does so. Van der Verstazen. Honey ball. Otto. And the French defence has stretched so far that they've gone offside. Quickly taken by Van der Verstazen, then to Dick Muir. A little bit scrappy by South Africa. On the back, on the back. And the French have turned it around. Good defence that by France. South Africa getting in a little bit of a tangle from that penalty. Disappointing really, because uh, they've done so many good things. And the French crowd will know that the problem in their side at the moment is that they're coughing up the ball okay, at the breakdown okay. situation. And uh, South Africa okay. are profiting from turnovers. Good show. And South Africa scrumming very well as Benazi was scragged by Johan Erasmus. Penalty. The referee being very strict on the South Africans not staying on their feet. Lovely pass from Lacroix to Le Flamand. Now there are plenty of Frenchmen out in the back line. Caban is there. Galtier waits as uh, Bruze picks up. Now it's the uh, front row, Califano, who's driven backwards. La Maison. Montgomery has a lot of space to make up here, but he's got onto it quickly, and that's a good pass to James Small, who sees that he has pace. This is good. This is terrific from Andre Sneijman. Now, does the referee say that was a knock? No, as Benetton gets it away. And now the French counter-attack. This is fantastic test match rugby. Peter Rousseau. Look at this, South Africa, the lovely little dummy there from Rousseau. And now it's Andre Sneijman, but he's heavily tackled by Benetton. Garvey. Van der Verstehsen says, let's get out of here. Suddenly. And suddenly he's made a bit of a hash, but he's still able to make him this big tackle from Henry Honeyball. And it was Erasmus up there, first of all. Galtier, Lacroix. Lacroix is scragged by Dick Muir, who he used to play with. Galtier gets it away to La Maison. Austin Runt was across very quickly. This is La Flamand. Oh, brilliant bit of rugby, that. Well, I, I can't help but agree, Huey, and uh, really you have to applaud both sides there for their ability to play the game. There was no nonsense involved in that. That was a bit of nonsense with the fullback dropping a ball that he would never expect to do so. But you saw the passion and the commitment of the Springboks in defence going forward nicely, the, the forwards covering the field and helping out the backs to make sure that France didn't have too much space to run into. Now the French make it difficult for South Africa. Teichmann, Fenta. Kreno Otto was there quickly. It was knocked down. The referee says play on by the French. Blue green scrum. <laughs> it's now a green scrum, I can assure you. Well, US one of those is one of the fittest guys around, but look at him panting there. And you can imagine how the forwards are feeling after that wonderful period of, of rugby. And really, you can tell a good game when the, when the time has just flown by. We've had 35 minutes. Teichmann, Van der Verstehsen, Montgomery. Now, he was looking on the inside to try and find some support. There was some far on the inside and Percy couldn't see it and one doesn't blame him he had people on him yeah he actually did the right thing he hung on to the ball we've seen too many players uh, in this uh, tour by South Africa throwing the ball away in that kind of situation 
US looking for the initial break, lovely little offload. Montgomery threw the first line of defense. There was nobody on either side, so he hung on. That's good play. Bruze, that's Benazi. And Palouse loses it, Van der Verstaisen retained the ball nicely. Fenta, honey ball, honey ball extends them, so does Erasmus. This is Teichmann, can he find support? They're a meter out. And it's a penalty to South Africa. <laughs> Mark Andrews, honey ball, and Andre Sneeman. Andre Sneeman gets it away to Peter Risso. Peter Risso is going to put it down right behind the posts. The South Africans are once again on their feet. Shaw scanned out wide and saw that South Africa had numbers. Now the ball actually went down the line appallingly, but the point was the initial vision by the lock forward had spotted the space. The ball got to Rousseau more by good luck than good management, and he did what you would expect a test quality wing to do, which was beat a man on the inside and score the third try. Superb. Henry Honeyball converts the extra two points as South Africa move up to 19. You see that ball coming away. Andre Sneeman did well. Watch how he offloads this with one hand. Peter Rousseau got the ball rather badly, but then had the space to do just that and get past the defenders. So Peter Rousseau, his sixth try in his eighth test match. So the guy scoring tries are plenty and is coming from great play. As by that was Mark Andrews, who is complaining like anything to the referee because they ran in underneath him. Van der Westhuizen, honey ball. Caban was up there very quickly. The referee must be looking at his watch towards half time. Well, Mark Andrews thinks there's a problem because he's taking a pounding from those kickoffs. Trainer Otto. Del Masso to feed. Palouse at two. Bruze at four. That's Palouse, but it's Bruze who gets. Quick support from Palouse and from Caban. Now the French making a little bit of ground. I know, the referee indicating it was not forward. Benazi looked turned around and uh, had something to say to the touch judge. That was Olivier Mel that uh, you saw warming up at one end of the ground. And amazing, in the last 20 minutes, you France have just stopped playing. And I'm not entirely certain why. Well, I think that they all say the South Africans have come at them uh, in numbers, the support play has been absolutely fantastic. We saw when Teichmann went away, Honeyball made the original break, and then all the loose forwards were one, two, three, there quickly. You see, we're into injury time. Huge man, Olivier Mal, and I think we might well see him start the second half. Uh, Jean Claude Screla. I think has decided that he needs something to uh, to get a bit of passion back in the French team. Well, remember too that they have Olivier Rumar who isn't in their squad, and one wonders why. Van der Verstaisen, Muir, wide to Peter Rousseau. Andre Sneeman has doubled around him. Le Flamar did very well. Dick Muir gets bumped off. Gautier Lacroix, the switch to Saint Andre. Now to Sadoni and Mark Andrews gets back. Benazi, big tackle. This is this is Saint Andre. South Africa will want to hold up before half time. Van der Verstaisen is there. Erasmus is down. Dick Muir goes in. Dalton feeding Honeyball, who also says let's get rid of it. But uh, Johann Erasmus is looking like he's badly hurt, as Derek Bevan says. It's half time and it's 
Oh, it's well read by Bruze, who's been a bit of, thorn, of a thorn in the side of South Africa from those kickoffs. But it will be South Africa's ball. See Vion Basson there and Vili Meyer. Danfin Sale was there as well. He'll get his chance on Tuesday down south against France A. Nicely taken by Crane Arto. James Dalton in the thick of things. Van der Westhuizen, Honeyball. Had realised there wasn't an awful lot in... Oh, you know, so positioned himself, but suddenly has an easy ball to field. Le Flamand. And uh, it's well read by Henry Honeyball. Now France have a bit of room here as suddenly gets it away to Glass. Tackled by Andre Sneeman. Glass is a little guy, but does uh, well to carry the ball that far. France piling in, and it's their scrum. Well, Jean-Luc Strela, their coach, is a very vociferous character, and I'm sure that he would have screamed at them at half-time. Here's the line-out with Crano Otto taking it uncontested. That's much better. Benazi, the tackle by Erasmus. Benazi lays it back well to Galtier. Le Flamand, Del Mazo. Strong tackle from Andrews. Now it's Califano. Galtier, Lacroix, La Maison, Benazi. Brilliant tackle by Dick Muir. Benazi is six foot six. Now it's uh, Le Flamand, Del Mazo. The South African tight forwards tackling well, but Glass is no suddenly gets away with it. Gautier, the switch to Saint Andre as he ducks under some cover. This is very good by Bruze. Gautier gets again. Benetton, also a big man. The crowd are on their feet. Gautier, it's a penalty to France now. It'll be interesting to see Gautier taking quickly. Gets it to Pelouse. A strong tackle there by the South Africans. As still Del Mazo drives it forward. Gautier, Saint Andre again short side. Dalton's got him covered. Gautier, this is great play by the French. Califano drives for the line. The tight forwards have to do a lot of tackling here. They drive it up towards the line. But uh, uh, James Small is in the thick of things now. Well, very good ball retention that by the French. And good defence by South Africa. But a great start to the second half by the blue-shirted Frenchman. Best passenger play for France in the match, in my uh, estimation. And I think uh, that the tactics at half-time will have been to try and drive it amongst the forwards a little bit more than they tried in the first half. James Small, as you can see on his left leg there, there's a bad stud mark. And he got trapped at the bottom of a ruck and uh, got very badly rucked out of the way and uh, he had a look at the referee he obviously was uh, remembering what happened on Tuesday down in Biarritz and wondering whether there's some retribution might be taken but it wasn't and it is to be hoped that uh, it's, it's no more than a bit of a scratch and bruising so the South African medical staff are in amongst their players this is a big scrum for both teams. Will South Africa get an eight-man shot going? Galtier to feed. Very solid by France. And it's a penalty. The referee adjudicating that Ostjurant had collapsed the scrum. Now what does Saint-André do? He says we'll take the scrum. Well, debatable whether Ost uh, should have been penalised there. And you can see exactly the same thing happened. But this time, Derek Bevan said no penalty. Saw Rassi Erasmus looking up at the referee to say, no, there's something going on here and we're not to cause. Now Osterant's got the bit of his man, but Benazi makes ground as Rassi Erasmus drags him backwards. France desperate to try and get this ball back to their back line. But they still decide to keep it in the forwards. Del Mazo. And hitting into his own man. 
accidental or side and South Africa have defended extremely well well the effect of that uh, turnover was from the defense by the South Africans around the fringe Benazi picked up here and although he got a couple of strides when he got hit he was hit backwards Stay back. Stay back. Benetton came off the side of the scrum far too early as Dick Muir pushes ahead, beautifully picked up by Sodony, but it is quite rightly a penalty to South Africa. Nice pick up on the run by Jean-Luc Sodony, who you could see from that was already out. <laughs> Sodony was waiting the smack from James Small there too. Oh, glum uh, Joe Mazo on the right-hand side. Some of the South Africans will remember having played against him in 1971. Good kick by Percy Montgomery, one of the try scorers. The others, Dick Muir and Peter Rousseau. Adrian Garvey's also had a big game. That's Kleino Otto. Kleino Otto goes up high. Beautiful play by Austria Runt. It's intercepted by Caban. Referee waiting for advantage as Palouse drives forward and it's a penalty to France for a head-high tackle. Well, well, Caban came off the back there very quickly. I just wonder at, uh, at US Fenevestes and there, we could see from that angle how uh, perilous it was to feed the ball out. And uh, he obviously had eyes only for his fly half. So this is an early chance for La Maison to uh, get France back into it. There's Mel, who's been warming up now for about 20 minutes. Well, it's a big man who takes a lot of warming up. South Africans will not be unfamiliar with him. Seven minutes gone in the second half. And it's a good, another good kick by Le Maison. There's James Small, who's uh, re receiving yet further attention, and I think he was fairly badly damaged at the bottom of that ruck. Bruze got the ball knocked out of his hands, but it went back. Del Mazo. Comes awkwardly for Gautier, Lacroix. Very nearly charged down. With a good clearance by the former Natal fly half. The lads on the French bench. Venditti, Okani, Kazalbu, Mel, Kassadi, and Ibanez. Andrews has gone but they're using Kleino Otto to good effect the South Africans at four in the line out Dalton's got it in hand and Adrian Garvey lost it to Lacroix this is Del Mazo as the Flamand comes away with it Benetton to Gautier Lacroix Dick Muir was right in there now the South Africans will need to cover Kiaz Sadoni drives it up towards the French the South African 22 and it's another penalty to France South Africa offside referee played a lot of advantage there before uh, a second penalty uh, reason occurred and then they came back for the first well finally Olivier Mel is going to come onto the field there's another example of, of the ball being flung away rather and the French are never more dangerous than in this kind of situation where they get turnover ball and suddenly they're flying all together as a blue wedge 
actually did very well to hold the ball up a long time Thierry Lacroix to allow Dalmasso to run off him set up nicely by Benetton who's done more in the first 10 minutes of this second half than in the entire first half put together but again South Africa doing well to get men wide quickly that's Olivia Merle La Maison with another successful penalty and France cheaping up on South Africa's 19. They've now got 15. So we've had 10 minutes in the second half. And De Merle has replaced Fabian Pelouse. Honeyball preferring the long one, Galtier, Le Flamand, Merle, tackled by Andre Fenter, Teichmann is up there quickly as well, Galtier, Lacroix, Garcia Rasmus was quite seriously interfered with there, so couldn't get up and pressure, put pressure on that man, Thierry Lacroix. So the Africa haven't had the ball for a while and they could do with just securing this one and grinding it. Mark Andrews comes forward, secures very well Ors Durant now in possession, then Dalton, Van der Westhuizen, the little probe, Peter Rousseau gives chase, La Flamand's there, Peter Rousseau's got him covered and into touch so that's good play by South Africa gaining ground and getting the put in yeah nice play by uh, US Fenevastasen whose kicking has been excellent today he had a look and saw that uh, Le Flamand had come up a little bit flat and he put the ball in behind him for a couple of guys to chase and now of course South Africa will have the put in and again let's see tidy ball here Otto, James Dalton finding him nicely now, James Dalton now in possession as they drive it forward, Dalton will break away, Dalton drives, Dalton scored the last time South Africa played France and he gets it again. This is the best performance by a South African team this year and it's because the forwards are doing the spade work. You see Dalton going for the line here, but there's a green and gold wall behind him. And even if he hadn't scored, Crane Otto would have been there, Adrian Garvey would have been there, but look at the determination on James Dalton's face there. That really is wonderful, wonderful Springbok rugby, and it's come again from good, secure, first phase possession. The French defence just disappeared, and James Dalton said, you're not going to stop me. Tremendous support work there from Crano Otto and Adrian Garvey. Another good kick by Henry Honeyball. And South Africa will have gained a lot of confidence by that score. Let's see it one more time and see how well this was worked. Dalton, of course, came around after feeding the line out. He was driven through the middle of that blue wedge. And you can see that any one of those three guys could have scored. Dalton did. It was Fabian Galtier, the little scrum half, who was holding on. James Dalton looked like one of those exercises when you run with a tyre behind you. <laughs> Beautifully taken by Mark Andrews. French entering that more from the wrong side. So important that the locks catch those kickoffs that go in that direction. You see the little shake of the hand there from James Dalton. Beautiful take by Mark Andrews. And it's a big punt from Percy Montgomery. 
Another one of the things to mention here is that uh, the lock pairing is working well today. They took 15 or 20 minutes to settle down, but I think Trainer Otto is having his best game in a South African jersey, and it's taking the pressure off Mark Andrews, who is now being able to contribute in the loose, which is, of course, one of the facets of his game that got him into the team that has really been lost this year. Very much so, Andy. There's the man in question. And he's going up now for the ball. Van der Vestes and Honeyball. Muir, beautiful catch by Muir and by Honeyball as he finds Montgomery. Montgomery bouncing one defender off. Did well to stay on his feet. Van der Vestes and Honeyball. The beautiful pass out to Gary Teichman. But St. Andre was up. But now there's a penalty right in front of the post. And let's hope that Gary Teichman, yeah, he's calling up Henry Honeyball to kick for the goal. Philippe Benetton is down for France. Took a bit of a pounding there. But again, this comes from great primary ball. Otto getting high. And watch how well Henry Honeyball plays here. Dick Muir did so well to pick it up. Honeyball takes it through the tackle, has a look to his left, and has the confidence to know that somebody will be running on the inside. It was Percy Montgomery. The forwards get there so quickly, and the French caught offside. And really, Huey, there's so much structure about the way that South Africa are playing at the moment, and it's the kind of thing that we haven't seen all year. Honeyball kicks his first penalty of the afternoon and moves South Africa up to 29 points. The South African flags are aloft. 29 points to 15. short one from La Maison, Benazzi was there very quickly, France this is a good kickoff play by the Frenchman, it's driven on by Del Mazo, the fiery hooker, Galtier's knocked it on, that was a let off for South Africa and Thierry Lacroix shows his disgust, Laurent Caban the man with the scrum cap, there's just no excuse for that, an international scrum half shouldn't drop a ball like that. Um, but it's a, a factor of, uh, of what's happening to the French because of how well South Africa are playing. France managing to wheel that, wheel that scrum quite viciously. That's a good clearance by Honeywood. No, he hasn't found his touch. Sadoni can counter-attack. This is where France are so dangerous. Erasmus got across for the tackle. Johan Erasmus, good to see Johan Erasmus in the action. He's been a little bit quiet this half. Took a tremendous blow just before half-time. For Ianachan Os is the call. Mark Andrews. Free kick to South Africa, early jumping by the French. Dalton gets into the ribs of Benazi as Andre Fenter rips clear. Van der Verstehen and probing for ground now. James Small has given chase. He'll have to slow down now. Sadoni. Sadoni right up against the touchline, beautifully taken by Teichmann. He should run straight because France can't do anything because Sadoni was way back. Van der Verstehen, Honeyball. Looking at the Honeyball did well there because the French backs the line so shallow. Durant. Teichmann finding space, Gary Teichmann leading by example. Now it's picked up by Garvey. The French defences are stretched to the limit. Van der Vestazen, Muir, Dick Muir. Now he gets it to James Small. This is going to be try number 18. Tremendous blow this for South Africa. And the boys are smiling. Tinas Delport, Nick Mallet behind him, Dale Santon. Well, again, it's scored by a back, 
but you can mark that one down to the forwards. Absolutely brilliant play, driving it up the middle, and then Dick Muir did so well as the link man, and we've spoken about it this year. If you get the ball wide, it doesn't particularly matter if it goes to hand, because you can see Dick Muir had created the space, and there's nobody with James Small, and the only thing that he had to worry about was taking his eye off it and, and dropping it, because he had so much time. But that is try number five, and South Africa are now on the verge of a record victory against the French. And I'm, I'm pinching myself to, to believe that I'm watching this because we felt that the French team were five or ten points better than South Africa going into this game. And Henry Honeyball adds salt to the wounds. Dick Muir, you see, as even, uh, uh, even the cameraman bought the dummy. But such experience from Dick Muir there, he knew that if he could only get the ball out wide, it had to be a try. And James Small couldn't, couldn't quite believe how much space he had. Now the French crowd are starting to give their, their team a little bit of the bird. South Africa have scored five tries to nil. But they've done well from their last two kickoffs. have France, Galtier, Lacroix, Glass. Now it's said, this is Saint-André. But the South African defence was good. That was Percy Montgomery, Galtier Lacroix, Del Mazo, now uh, Tonnerre. Galtier Lacroix, the huge figure of Olivia Merle. But to say he's for Merle staying on his feet extremely well as he drives up, up over the five metre line. Well, you can see the effect that uh, this is having on Jean-Claude Screla. It looks as if he's aged 10 years during this match. Olivier Mel has done there exactly what his coach would have wanted him to do, which is to act as a focus for the rest of the forwards to, to drive around. It's we James now Dalton. move in with 20 minutes to left, left in the game. James Dalton is having a little bit of repairs, but I think as much as anything, this is tactical. And uh, I, I, I'm full of admiration for the way that South Africa are playing at the moment because there's a purpose to everything that they do and even when they're forced back into desperate defence you could see Urs van der and saying keep it up, keep it up we don't want to give away a penalty for collapsing them all <laughs> smile on Oshiron's face there, that's lovely against Frank Tuner. He didn't play in the test last year, Oshiron, it was Darby Thron who was in the front row, he's on the bench today. South Africa will want to put pressure here, Tuner is very strong. And France now changed the direction of it, good scrum by them, Galtier is there. This is a great scrum by France, can they keep it moving forward? South Africa seem to have stopped it. Galtier gets, no, it's Sadouni who gets from Benazi. And I think Sadouni's fallen badly. And it's a penalty to France as they're penalised for collapsing that mall. Now, what is Philippe Saint-André going to say? Well, Gary Teichman was the tackler. They've taken the scrum as I thought they would. They've got plenty of space on this side of the field, that's the short side. And once again, the French scrum is very strong. And it's wheeled through the 90 degrees. Well, you saw Adrian Garvey come flying out on the tight head side. The far side from us, you won't see it from this angle, it's already happened. But... Uh, Quite obviously, Christian Califano got underneath his man and popped him out. And in this situation, South Africa must avoid giving away a penalty try. Well, that's a good decision by Derek Bevan. He said he couldn't be sure who had collapsed the scrum. And it's good refereeing. Shown all his experience having refereed. Look at that scrum by South Africa, but Galtier gets it to Sadani, and Henry Honeyball tackles well, but Benazi goes to ground with it. Gal that's picked up now by Dalmazo, 
and he's run into his own man once again. That's the second time he's done that when France have had sustained attacks at the South African line. Dick Muir, try today, made one on the outside for James Small. France for Stairs had plenty to do today. Third scrum in a row, and uh, on that occasion, France opted for quick ball to feed wide. But you saw how quickly that South Africans uh, came up in defence there. And there's a line of them to, to make sure that not a man gets through. Running into his own man is, is the decision subsequent to that. South Africa try and hold it steady. It's, yeah, it's gone through the 90 degrees. Well, valuable seconds are ticking away here as we move up towards the point where they're now just over 15 minutes left in the game. South Africa leading by 36 points to 15 as Teichmann bursts away with it. He's well wrapped up there by Thierry Lacroix. Penalty. Now, Gary Teichmann went to ground there. He was desperately trying to get it onto South Africa's side and gave away the penalty. Yeah, he will feel that he was still going forward during most of the time that he was trying to push the ball back. The referee said not. La Maison probes for the touchline, sets a lineup up here for France. There's the president of France. Mr. Lapasse, the fellow in the glasses. Yeah, 26. Yes, yes. Merle is now at two. Will it go to that man, Benazi? Andre Fenter will be watching him. It does go to Benazi. And Califano comes in very quickly. South Africa will have to hold this up as France get it over the line. And the try is given. Good play that by France. And it looks like it was Olivier Mel. Yeah. Well, that's brilliant stuff from France. They've done so well to come back. Tail ball this time, but you saw that as soon as Benazi had taken it, Mel came through on the drive, and the wedge behind him made sure that uh, South Africa weren't going to be able to defend with one or two. They had to have a whole unit behind if they were going to stop that drive, and they weren't able to do so. Now, that's one try against five. It might just galvanise the French, but is it too late? Now, if we can see this, we may be able to pick this up again. Olivier Mel got up to the ground. There's going to be a penalty to South Africa on the centre spot because Derek Bevan spotted Olivier Merle and he said to St. Andre, indicating with the elbow, he said, silly, Merle's going to get a penalty against him. La Maison for the extra two points. This to move France up to 22, he's hooked it away. He's kicked well all afternoon, just missed the first one and that's the second miss out of his seven kicks. And now, what is Gary Teichman going to call for? He's asked Henry Honeyball to kick for touch. The floodlights are now on. And Honeyball, no, he hasn't found his touch. Le Flamand, Sadouni. France is so dangerous from this position. Sadouni, the switch to Del Mazzo. Andre Fenta grabbed his arm and the ball spouted out. Now it's Van der Westhuizen. Erasmus will want to set up a little bit of second phase. Dick Muir was there. Well, it worked out OK for South Africa, but uh, Henry Honourable really had to find touch from that restart penalty, and uh, he'll be kicking himself for the fact that he allowed the French to run the ball back at them. And Andre Fenter saved the day with that good tackle on Dalmasso, but from here, South Africa must just keep it tight. Van der Weersthuis and Honeyball Muir. And uh, Andre Sneijman did nicely there, because... Percy Montgomery had come hurtling into the back line. Now Van der Verstehuizen gets it away to Erasmus with no support at all. But uh, Erasmus doing nicely. Honey ball. And now James Small trying to get inside. Uh, 
St. Andre. Dick Muir is there quickly. Look at Dick Muir digging for the ball. Did so nicely. Van der Veers and Mark Andrews. Big run from Mark Andrews. He was tackled by Tuner. Now it's Honeyball. Lovely break by him as he's tackled by Caban Teichman. Gary Teichman finds space. If he had just looked to his left, he would have seen lots of green jerseys. Honeyball, Muir. Merle comes over the top. What does the referee say? As Dalton digs for it. Now it's Van der Vestes and waiting. Erasmus. Oh, look at this from Johan Erasmus. And the two Free State flankers are going berserk there. Glass. Big tackle from James Small as it's taken away from Thierry Lacroix. Now it's Flamola Command. Tashman is across there, picked up by Benetton. But look at Kono Otto. Kono Otto dribbles it back, but unfortunately he knocked it on. Terrific cover from the lock forward. That's Benetton down again. And again, I have to say how impressed I am at the focus that South Africa is showing here. They've been on the back foot for the last 10 minutes, but when they got the ball, they were so constructive with the way that they used it. Very nearly an, uh, an amazing try through the two back rowers. France turn it over, but there's always defenders there. And the, the, the amount of ground that the forwards have covered today has really been superb. It has, Andy. It's been quite remarkable as you see the drive here from James Small into Stéphane Glass. That looked a little like it had gone forward James Small making sure he's going to bury his man Galtier Galtier has found space but Teichman shut him down now it's picked up by Ruse Dalmazo strong on the run is Dalmazo now it's Califano the other tight uh, forward the tight forwards have on both sides have been tremendous glass La Maison Sadoni La Flamand Andre Snayman's got him covered he must get him into touch yes they do well it took Andre Snayman a while to get his man but eventually it happened beautiful oh. movement that by France French crowd really getting behind their guys now there was an overlap here and Snayman you see from there does so well to get back and nail his man and he held on for dear life now this is exactly where France scored their try through Olivier Mal. I don't expect them to do anything different except of course that it's South a South African, African put in so Mark Andrews at two just three in the line out for South Africa Andrews will wait for Dalton to throw just backing up and the danger Caban gets. Gautier, Benetton. Still France drive towards the line. South Africa managed to hold him out. Califano. Califano's got it over the line. The referee's given him the try. Christian Califano, the loose head prop. And France get their second try of the game. It's taken a while, but now France are playing with the kind of verb that we expected right from the start. Califano was surrounded by five green shirts there, but you saw the low body position that he adopted straight away. There was one guy behind him pushing, and very little that any defence can do against that kind of committed run by a guy of the shape of Califano. That's a really good try. If it's converted suddenly, there's only nine points between the sides. But uh, I still feel that South Africa have got this game won, and it's just a question of, of making sure they don't panic. And Lamazon has just gone off the boil a little bit with his kicks. He's got a very smooth action. Eight minutes to go, plus a little bit of injury time. Important that Henry Honeyball gives his forwards time to get under this kick. Andre Snayman has defended well today. Not too many attacking opportunities for him. Merle is there. Erasmus is up with him. And Merle 
South Africa offside coming round they need to regroup very quickly as uh, Philippe Saint Andre says to La Maison punted downfield he makes absolutely certain and so France are back in South African territory here's Mel with the restart kick and South Africa from uh, the moment that the mall is formed accused of coming in from in front of the rear feet Olivier Mel couldn't believe that he'd lost the ball there <laughs> Benazi, Dautier, Lacroix, La Maison, and good tackle by Andre Sneijman. But Dautier gets again. Benazi drives it up towards the South African 22. Gautier, Califano. Gautier, France retaining possession. La Maison to Benetton. Van der Verstaisen, the referee waits for advantage, but Joost van der Verstaisen came through there. I think the referee could turn, the, turn this around. Look at James Small talking to Thierry Lacroix, but Gautier was uh, in fact retaliated on Joost. Let's hear what Derek Bevan has to say. You're too good, you're too good, you're too good players. I want to walk off with both of you, you're two very good players. I look for the forward, not you. This is what it's for. Now, Joost is initially guilty of going over the top there off his feet. He felt that the ball was out, but it was subsequent to that that retribution was dealt out. It hasn't been turned around. Le Maison has found touch right deep, uh, in fact right on the South African five metre line France have uh, had a tremendous comeback after we had in just that six minute blitz by South Africa try, penalty try both tries converted by Henry Honeyball which moved the score right up to 36 but after the 19th minute, in fact in the last 15 minutes of the game it's been all France, a tremendous comeback by them five minutes to go well taken by Benazi. Califano now drives in. It's Tournier there as well with Del Mazo. South Africa have to regroup very quickly. Osterant's going to find a place to, to pack in. Califano just, no, it was in fact Tournier who put a boot into somebody there. But South Africa have driven them back. Gautier, Lacroix, quickly to Klaas. Sneijman with a tackle. Can the French get it back? South Africa stopping them from doing it. This is Galtier as Tournier drives in its penalty to France. Galtier, Saint Andre, the captain. Now, can South Africa stand a few? Galtier, Benetton, Benetton's driven back well, but still Galtier gets. Now it's uh, Glass who gets away. And now, no, it's Glass who scores. It was La Maison who got it away to Glass. And Glass showed his pace. He really is. He's small but extremely quick. And it's now 30 points to 36. Well, you have to admire the way the French have come back in this game. They've done it through finally controlling the ball amongst the forwards and then giving good ball for their three corners to work with. Glass, you can see there, nobody was going to stop him from there. But the hard, the donkey work had been done up front. And the, the rucking and the mauling by the French has been really superb. And it has allowed the three quarters that kind of space. Now suddenly, on my watch, uh, we are heading into the last minute. And uh, this... Uh, conversion takes on a very important hue because if it goes over there's only four points between the sides a difficult one for La Maison Just van der Verstaisen receiving the aid from the medical men La Maison will know how important this is because there will there's bound to be a kickoff after this 
Well, this is bad for South Africa. Look at this kick. Look at this. That's a tremendous kick by the French centre. Let's have another look at it. It was that little uh, deception by La Maison and the ball quickly through the hands of Lacroix that created it out wide. But again, the way that the forwards have, have just come to life in the last 20 minutes suggests two things. One, that France are a much better side than South Africa have made them look. And two, South Africa are suffering badly from fatigue now. That's Jules van der Westhuizen, who is uh, on the stretcher. Werner Swanepoel is going to come on for his second cap. This is bad for South Africa. Let's hope that Jules van der Westhuizen isn't too badly injured. And so a big moment here for Werner Swanepoel. And South Africa will have to get onto this uh, kickoff from Henry Honeyball extremely fast into injury time 33 seconds into injury time there must be about a minute and a half of it as Benazi goes back Gautier Lacroix Mel Mel's made a huge difference since he came onto the field Gautier Dalton will need to make the first tackle Tonnerre South Africa will have to tackle like crazy now. Sarani gets it to Caban. Good tackle by Durant. It's gone forward. It's South Africa's scrum. And they will take as much time as possible putting the ball in here. That's Joost being carried off, and we do hope that it's not as bad as it looks at the moment. But uh, South Africa have just got to keep it tight now for another, I reckon, minute and a half, and it's all over. The French did loose forwards hurtling off that scrum. Just van der Westhuizen getting a tremendous ovation as he goes off the field. But you see the drive and spirit of the French as now uh, Johanny Rasmus drives it back. Swanepoel, Durant two huge men clash Swanapur honey ball that's the tactic now James Small's got to get there quickly oh it's an awful mix-up but St. Andre recovers James Small goes for him now it's Le Flamand Le Flamand's got a bit of space yeah they need to shut him down James Small went all the way back again great cover by the Springbok record holding wing his 44th test match today and Derek Bevan says it's all over and one of the great test matches comes to an end Andy I have to concur wherever you might sit in whatever camp you will rarely see a better